<laughs> okay, so welcome everyone to our meeting of coaching seminar. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mizuka Komatsu uh, from Kobe University, Japan, who will talk about applications about of uh, input output equations. Uh, please, Mizuka, welcome. Okay, uh, thank, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Mizuka Komatsu from uh, Kobe University. Um, today, I would like, uh, um, um, so first of all, thank you very much uh, for Professor Pokudin to invite me here to speak here. And the title of my talk is Application of the Input of Equations and Analysis of Unidentified Models and Physical Reserve Computing. And as, a, as the title, as you can see from the title, my story is about application and, is, and it's especially from the perspective of mathematical modeling and data analysis. So I'm not getting into the details of the differential algebra today, but I I would like to um, share my work and establish new research connections. And let me start with the um, self introduction. I'm Mizuka and I'm a PhD student of Kobe University, and Kobe is located here, and it's a bit far from Tokyo, but but it's across to Kyoto or Osaka. And, and research cures is like, like this. And when I was an undergraduate student, I was working on mathematical modeling uh, of RGs because th th this was uh, my interest. <laughs> and, and through this uh, work, I found that the model identifiability problem that I will introduce later is quite important. And through this work, I I uh, met differential algebra. That's how I met differential algebra. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and this is the outline of my, uh, my research. And as I said, I start my uh, research career uh, with this uh, modeling of simulation analysis. And I found that the model identifiability problem is very important. And and recognize that uh, there's a structurally identifiability method that is based on differential algebra and is very uh, useful. And this uh, method is, this method used input output equations. And this is the key equation for this analysis. And in general, these equations are used for uh, judging identifiability of the model, but I applied this equation in different in different way, and uh, uh, the one is analysis of unidentifiable models, because unidentifiable models appears in practice a lot. So I wanted to analyze these kind of models using these uh, input output equations. And the second uh, topic is about uh, the analysis of physical is about computing. Um, uh, this is a kind of machine learning technique and it is um, it, it's somehow related to soft robotics. And, yeah. and here's the outline of today's talk. I will start with uh, the motivation and then I will talk about two topics, but I think I will not have enough I will not. I don't have enough time to talk about section three, so I will move this part into after the breakout room session. I think. So let me start with uh, modeling of RGs. So uh, first of all, um, RGs um, uh, exhibit immune responses to specific antigens. Antigens are some some foreign matters, and which which may result in damaging the body itself. And RGs are affected by environmental factors and individualities and so it's very complicated phenomenon. And I, I wanted to work on uh, uh, this phenomena uh, via mathematical modeling. And I, I did it in this paper and it's using Japanese. So I think it, most of you cannot read, but yeah, there, there are some equations at least. And, and in this paper, we used the experimental result uh, conducted by Haspi, uh, who is an immunologist. And in his 
experiment, uh, dietary antigens uh, called OBA were administrated to eight subjects. And the time changes of the dietary antigens are uh, observed like this. Because there are eight subjects, we have eight graphs. And based on this uh, experimental data and some immunological knowledge, he, uh, they classified these graphs into three types. And the one is, um, uh, for example, the pink graph corresponds to allergic uh, constitutions, and the blue one corresponds to normal, normal people, and so on. But I, but I thought it it's, would be better if we can classify these graphs more quantitatively. And that was my, uh, that was the motivation of my work. And uh, the, this is the model that I proposed, and I will not um, uh, explain the details, but, but roughly speaking, it's a kind of compartment model uh, called PPPK model. And we, it's basically used uh, pharmacology. And we consider uh, immune risk immune responses additionally. And as a result, we uh, have, we, the, our model becomes like this, and we have 15 differential equations and five algebraic equations and 21 parameters, and, and they are nonlinear. And the important thing is this parameter, each of which, uh, each of these parameters is assigned to biological meanings. And we are interested in these values. And also these uh, are support these the values of these parameters are supposed to reflect individualities because we uh, the model itself is common among subjects. So uh, the values of the para estimate parameter, uh, the values of estimate parameter reflect the individualities. And here is uh, the part of proposed model. And uh, it's about a liver compartment. And we have three dif different equations and one algebraic equations. And we have some input functions and uh, some terms related to distribution. And here's nonlinear term and so on. And uh, the unknown uh, parameters are colored in red. And we, are, we want to estimate these uh, values using time series data shown previous in the pre previous slides. And it corresponds to uh, the sum of x plus, plus x5 plus x6. We only have this data. And because the model is complicated, but we only have this limited data, uh, parameters are not uniquely determined. And uh, this is a problem. Um, but this can happen very easily in practice. So, when this kind of problem happens, people usually consider identifiable use of the model. And uh, this is an example of a review on the identifiability of the model. And uh, there are various, uh, various definitions of identifiability, but one of it is like this. So if the parameters of state space model are not determined uniquely given noise free data, then the model is said to be structurally unidentifiable. And if uh, uh, there is a, some methods to analyze the identifiability of the model, and one of them is uh, some, uh, based on differential algebra, which I will uh, quickly explain here. So we have a state space model, and we have uh, all these here, and here is the observation model. And by forming differential elimination to this model, then we obtain uh, some equations uh, that only have uh, input and output variables and their derivatives. And uh, uh, by, uh, we suppose uh, that the noise free data is given to this equation. Then as a result, we will obtain constraints on parameters. So by solving this, uh, uh, equation, then we can check whether the each of the parameters admits a unique solution or not. And uh, an example is something like this. We have state space model here, and we have 
uh, state variables x1 and x2, and we only observe x1, and y is output variables, and u is input variables. And uh, we have for unknown parameter a1 to a4, and uh, by performing differential ordination, we will obtain this um, equation. And uh, um, supposing that the noise-free data is given, uh, general, uh, in general, these coefficients is uniquely determined. And by this set of constraints on parameters, we can uh, find whether the, each parameter is identifiable or not. And you can see more detailed discussions in this paper, for example. And, um, and as a result of identifying reality analysis, we can, uh, we can find that there are a lot of unidentifiable models in practice, for example, these models. So uh, people want to analyze these unidentifiable models and there are some existing approaches. I will introduce some. And the, one, the first one is estimation of parameters by a global optimization method. And this is quite simple, but it uh, may overlook the possible parameters that face to the data. That's a problem. And uh, the second approach is modification of unidentifiable models into identifiable models. And, and they're divided into two types. The first one is modification of mathematical models. And it, it may be possible uh, mathematically, but it, uh, it may decrease interpretability of the models. So sometimes it's not plausible for, um, from the perspective of mathematical modeling, because for example, in our case, uh, each compartment correspond to each organ uh, of the human. So um, uh, if we uh, modify the structure of the model, maybe the interpretability will be decreased and that's a, that may be a problem. And uh, the other way is modification of the way of data acquisition. And it may be a good, but it only varied if such modification can be uh, uh, this, such modification are reasonable. And other approach is uh, estimation of multiple parameters, uh, but uh, this may uh, still overlook some possible parameters. And based on this background, I will propose um, uh, a new uh, method to analyze, to analyze the 95 models. And this is a joint work with Professor Takahari Yaguchi uh, from Kobe University, and he's my supervisor. And so now I would like to introduce our proposed method. So as I said, uh, analytical methods for analytical models have been under development. So uh, based on this, we introduced a novel comp concept. We call this uh, the parameter variety. And using this variety, we analyzed and I need to follow models uh, together with observed data. And the parameter variety means the set of parameters, each of which generates the model output that fits to the output data. So um, here, I would like to illustrate our idea. And here we have state space model. And this is the Fitzfunag model uh, with state variables x1 and x2. And we have observation model. And y is the output variable. And uh, here is the data corresponding to this output variables times this data. And as you can see, uh, these uh, two uh, uh, solutions fit to the data, but these are, are given different parameters like this, A star and A2 star. And also they, these are different parameters. They generate the same, uh, uh, they, they both fit to the data. 
And not only these two parameters, there are all parameters that fit to the data. And it forms a line uh, in two-dimensional parameter space. And this is a, a, a lovely thing. This is a parameter variety. And I would like to ex ex extract. And in general, uh, the parameter variety can be explicitly described by using algebraic varieties or should I, I should say algebraic sets. And uh, here is a, a love definition of the parameter variety. And, and in this talk, I will not I give a specific, I mean, strict definition. Um, actually, the paper corresponding to my talk is under revision. So, and I'm hoping that it will be published in the near future. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but I, in this talk, I just focus on the idea. And so given a state space model and, uh, and time sleep data, UD and YD, and D denotes the data. And the set of parameters, each of which generates a model output Y given A that correspond to the output data is uh, defined as a parameter variety. So uh, here's our trying of the proposed method. What we are going, what we want to do is extracting all possible parameters and determined by state-based model and uh, given observed time series data. And our method is divided into two parts. The first part is uh, differential eliminations. And by differential elimination, we obtain input of equations from the state space model. And um, but the second one is estimation of the coefficients uh, by using the time series data. Then we obtain the parameter variety. And and here is some uh, techniques required for the estimating the parameter variety. And I will explain this in order. And through uh, my presentation, I'd like to use an example of the model and experimental data. And this is the example. Um, uh, and this is a model of some biodynamics and the drug therapy. And uh, X1 denotes the uh, not normal cells and X2 denotes the uh, uh, infected cells by virus. And these three are uh, interacted with each other. And we only observe the time series of viral load. And this is uh, represented by these state space models. And we have uh, some unknown parameters colored in red. And, and for example, uh, the, uh, the infected cell is a uh, uh, infected cell it produced a uh, virus at some uh, reproduction rate, but that the rate is uh, infected by um, uh, the efficacy of the drug. And here's a model. And uh, based on the assumption in this paper, um, uh, it can the model can be simplified like this. And I would like to use this model for illustration. And observe time series data of three different subjects is uh, like this. And uh, now I'd like to uh, explain the technical details. And firstly, the input up equations are equations that describe the relationship between the model input and output. So uh, th these are the equations without state variables and their derivatives. And for example, for this state space model, we will obtain this kind of input up equations. And roughly speaking, uh, the, these coefficients can be determined uniquely. So uh, by using the time series data, we will obtain uh, this kind of uh, constraints on parameters and that uh, describes the parameter variety. And so to perform differential elimination, 
we consider this model as differential polynomials, and then we consider the differential area generated by the model. We did I I denote this as P D. D D denotes the differential, and uh, we have uh, this area contains input up equations. And here is a theorem pro uh, provided by Osman. And in and for our state space model, an input output equation exists in the ideal generated by this blue one. And this basically corresponds to the order of the derivatives. So for example, this denotes the nth order derivatives of x. And this corresponds to this equation, and this corresponds to this, this one. And so this the generator is uh, um, the derivatives of the models up to any order. So by considering this uh, non-differential ideal, uh, we can uh, uh, the existence of input application is guaranteed. So that, that means uh, by considering this uh, nth order truncate ideal, we can find the lowest order input up equations. And actually, by computing the preliminary basis of the uh, first and second, third order truncated differential cross, uh, ideal corresponding to the model in order, then we can find the lowest input up equations. And I have a question. Hi. Uh, yes. Right about this bullets. So, um, but what if your lowest order equation appears later in the process? So what if uh, you perform the elimination this way? You find some equation that depends only on the desired variables, but the one of the lowest order appears only later. So it appears that this method would terminate uh, prematurely, potentially. Correct. So, sorry. Um, uh, wait, wait a minute, please. Sorry, I just fixed the volume. I'm sorry. I, I think I think I can hear you. Sorry. Yeah. So my uh, my question is uh, uh, that uh, so maybe could this method uh, in the first bullet terminate prematurely? Uh, so it seems that it just uh, stops if you find some input output equation, but might mm -hmm. not find uh, the one of the minimal order. Um. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get, get your question, so I'm sorry. Um, Suppose the a minimal order input output equation is something like a times y prime plus uh, y equals zero. But instead, uh, after the elimination, you find the derivative of this equation first. For some, yes. for some reason. And uh, then this method and the bullet would terminate earlier than it should have been, right? Um, Maybe we can discuss this later. And, uh, yes, so I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you. And um, yeah, so and uh, we we denote the uh, lowest order derivative at uh, lowest order input of equation as h, and uh, this is the characteristic set of this differential ideal. And the PD is the differential ideal generated by the model. And the intersection of uh, uh, this P PD and this differential link uh, is equal to this one. So you can use the characteristic set I mean, at H, this lowest order input of equations 
correspond to the characteristic set of this differential ideal. And I, I think you can use the characteristic set to drive uh, this lowest order input of equations. And, but, but the, so uh, my talk will just use the Glebner basis method. And if you have some comments or advice, maybe I, I, I will be happy to uh, be um, told later. And so in my talk, we consider a state space model and uh, we have derivatives of the models up to uh, nth order. Then um, we consider the ideal uh, generated by these um, generators. And we denote it as I with super squared N. And uh, we are interested in the input output relationship. So we consider the intersection of this link and this EL. And um, by computing the Glebner basis, for example, we can obtain this, uh, the input output equation that describes this intersection. And um, yeah, maybe, uh, and the next uh, topics is about the comp comprehensive web mass system. And it's, it's um, hard to explain, but uh, I mean, <clears throat> and this is a, a model of viral dynamics that I showed before. And if you assume, that the parameters A5 is not equal to one and A6 is not equal to zero, then uh, the glomerular basis uh, becomes like this. But if we substitute specific values, uh, I mean, if we substitute A5 is one or A6 is zero into these equations, then we will obtain different uh, glomerular basis. So, uh, we, we need to consider these things uh, in order to um, consider the parameter variety. So, and the comprehensive lemma system will be useful for this. Um, this defines partitions of parameter space and corresponding global basis over each partition and such that these two are equal to each other. The one is uh, the Glebner basis of the ADL of which generated given specific var parameter values. And, and this one is the set of formulas obtained by substituting specific values into the Glebner basis of the ADL uh, uh, with unknown uh, parameters. And here's the precise definitions. Uh, but I just want to say um, in this definition, we consider um, uh, this polynomial link. So we assume that uh, the coefficient of uh, the model, uh, I mean, the coefficient of the model should be polynomial functions of parameters. But uh, in, in our example, we have rational functions of parameters. So we, we need to do something here. And in um, one way to do that is uh, introduction, um, introduction of new parameter, AH, which satisfies this. And additionally, by additionally considering this um, constraints, and compute the comprehensive Glebner system of the area corresponding to the model, then we will obtain this, these two. And, uh, and this, this is our uh, input output equations. And these are the input output equations for this partition. And lastly, uh, we need to estimate the coefficient of input output equations like, like this. And in general, 
input output questions is li like this, and CK is uh, the uh, function of parameters, and uh, the blue one is a monomial of input output and their derivatives. And the right hand side is also uh, something like this. And uh, we because the blue parts are um, uh, input and output, so we can substitute the uh, data. And by uh, substituting the data into these equations, we will obtain the system of equations of which indeterminates are CK, where K is, is equal to one to large K, and large K is here. And as a result, we obtain this uh, system of equations. And by solving these equations with respect to CK, we will obtain, uh, we assume that we assume that we obtain the unique values and we denote it as B, BK. And uh, as a result, we obtain the set of constraints on parameters like this. Function of for a function of parameters is equal to a constant. We will obtain this kind of constraints and we use it to describe the parameter variety. And in my talk, I assume these uh, values will be uniquely determined, but um, in this paper, uh, uh, um, the case that, that these values are not uniquely determined is considered. And I, for, for example, for the input output equation, for this input output equations, uh, we, we substitute the data uh, y and their derivatives into these equations. And by solving linear equations, we obtain the values of C1 and C2, and we denote the values V1 and V2. And as a result, um, we obtain the parameter variety given noise-free data, where uh, uh, this constant hold, and it is the union of large V1 and large V2. And it's, it's something like this. And V1 is the, um, for, for example, this correspond to um, uh, this coefficient, and this correspond to this coefficient and so on. And we have four uh, values, V1 to Vk, which are determined by using observation. And although I said we substitute observed the data into the input of equations, this data is not uh, typically observed or it's noisy in practice like this. So we need to do something more. So to do this, we estimate the um, pseudo data using the model. And to do this, we first estimate a parameter that fits to the data. And then this is supposed to be on the variety. And using this parameter, we generate the model output and that fits to the data. And using this uh, pseudo data, we compute the derivatives numerically. And although I said the values of CK is uniquely determined, the, the way of computation of this is um, um, there some ways can uh, some ways can be considered to compute these values. The one is the deterministic computation, and the other one is probabilistic competition. And I, I now I visualize the estimated parameter variety for two subjects. Actually, there are three subjects, but I visualize two of them. And this coefficient is um, estimated using the time series data. 
and deterministically. And here is a free to dimensional parameter space. And the parameter variety forms uh, is the parameter varieties are something like this. And you can see and you can see some points here. And these are the par uh, parameters estimated in the original paper. And this parameter correspond to uh, this, uh, these considerations. And for example, by the estimated parameter in the original paper, uh, the high efficacy of the drug is um, shown, I mean, considered. But by our method, we found that uh, there, there are possibilities that uh, uh, parameters around here also fit to the data. So we can say uh, the efficacy of drug may be low. So in that way, uh, we can analyze the unidentifiable models using the parameter varieties. And And I will maybe skip this slide. And, and the summary. And uh, in, my, uh, in my study, I, I wanted to analyze unidentifiable models. And we, I, we tried to extract all possible parameters. Uh, the, uh, determined by state space models and um, observed time data. And we proposed a novel concept called parameter variety. And, and this is the set of parameters, each of which generates the model output that fits to the output data. And here is some technical techniques required for of the parameter variety. And yeah, and that maybe that's all for my uh, talk or the first part. And maybe late, later I will talk about this part. And thank, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you, Mizuka, for, for, for such nice, nice, nice first part. Uh, any Quick questions to the speaker uh, about the first part of the talk. Please un unmute yourself, or, or you can type in the chat if uh, you don't want to. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so why were you thinking about comprehensive problem bases? Um, uh. Uh, because it's uh, I I need it so uh, it, it's needed for the proof of the parameter variety because um, we, we want to consider all possible parameters and um, so you wanted to find out um, where it breaks, so to speak, right? breaks yeah so the where you have some something else right some different behavior right so uh the values a equals one and um e5 equals one and a6 equals zero you want mm -hmm. to compute it automatically right for you yeah is that what the reason is yes yes thank you thank you other questions William, I think you have muted yourself, actually. <laughs> uh, I think um, that in a lot of these models that you discuss where you have some results, it's all for ODEs, right? But yes. I think you started with a, the system which is uh, uh, PDE and nonlinear as well, right? So, yeah, yeah. How you, so how do you apply 
this to the original setup that you want? I mean, the most general, put it that way. This one or more general one? Yeah, I, I think William is talking about this Hinaguma model. Ah. Uh, Aren't you? Yeah. William? Yeah, the, the beginning that you put up a, a very general model where you uh -huh. have PDE and nonlinear. But then later on, uh -huh. all the uh, all the results uh, of you know turning turning a state space model into an input output model and also um, computing the parameters. Um, they were all for ODEs, is that right? I mean, all the example you, I mean, most of the example you show are like that. Uh, um, I'm not sure whether I can, I'm answering to your question, but. Uh, well, well, okay, that's for you. You, you can use nonlinear ODEs at least. And if you have um, right. differential algebraic equations, it can be converted into uh, ordinary differential equations no, if it has some nice but, properties called Hessen Bell type or differential algebraic equation or something. Okay. Yeah, so, so you have to increase the number of variables, in other words, uh, state variables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. How big a model can you now handle? In terms uh, of it's quite a small, it's quite small, maybe up to five state variables. Five state but variables. I think I, if you use the uh, differential algebra approach, like a Rosenfeld Gremner algorithm, maybe it will be fast. So that would be better. Okay. Okay, any other questions for now? Then yeah, then if not, then let's let's pass to the breakout rooms.